UFC arrives in Paris for the first time ever on Saturday night with a stacked card. In the main event, it's a heavyweight banger, as France's very own Cyril Gann takes on Australian Shuey King, Tai Tuivasa. While in the core main event, it's a monster middleweight matchup between the former 185 pound champion Robert the Reaper Whitaker and the Italian dream Marvin Vittori. UFC Paris goes down live on BT Sport 3 on Saturday. Prelims start from 6 pm with the main card from 8. May we, may we, welcome to Fight Week here on BT Sport. We're in Paris for the first ever UFC event to come from fans. I'm Adam Catterall, pleasure as always to be in your company. And it's a pleasure to be back in the company of these two gentlemen, the Hall of Fame and Mr. Michael Bispin, and this guy who's gonna gloat because he got to witness something very special only a couple of weeks ago, the one, the only, Mr. Nick Pete. Before we get stuck into everything in France, Come on, get it out of your system. Tell everybody how good Salt Lake City was, my See man. See this? Yes. This has not <laughs> left grinning. my face ever since that head kick with one minute to go. Absolutely sensational. An incredible week, as the crew know. As the crew know. It's Salt Lake, baby. The Salt Lake crew. You it, guys aren't part of it. Have you noticed that? There's a bit of a new click going on. No, I know. Absolutely there is. I've never felt like more of an outsider, <laughs> ever. Yeah, you. On your own show. <laughs> hey, we didn't uh, listen, we're going to obviously talk about that throughout the course of the week as we bring you more content here from Paris because it was monumental for British mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. Leon Edwards becoming uh, the champion of the world. We will uh, get stuck into that on our live weigh-in show. But right now, boys, let's talk all things France because we just had a little bit of a trot around the local streets and there is already a buzz in the air. Obviously, the first ever one to hit this fantastic country, UFC in town, and it feels like it already. Oh, absolutely. Long overdue, by the way. Uh, and as you said, definitely a buzz. I believe at the Wayne's tomorrow, there's going to be over 4,000 people in attendance. Sold out crowd. I think there's like over 100,000 tickets that were demanded or requested. So that's how much they oversold, so to speak. So wow. they are extremely excited for this event. And it's an absolute stacked fight card. It's going to be a good weekend, boys. That, that's Mike's way of telling you, don't ask him for tickets because he can't get any. <laughs> I <laughs> couldn't get a ticket. When I first got booked for this, I got an email from production. Like, and by the way, Mike, don't even bother. And this was months ago. It was sold out then. It's crazy. Now we're looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be a, a tremendous night at the Okora Arena. Make sure you're listening or tuning into us on BT Sport 3 this weekend. Prelims get going from six with that main event. We'll make car going from eight o'clock. Let's talk about the main event, because it's mm. the big boys, it's the heavyweights. Cyril Gann taking on Tai Tuivasa. We kind of know where this is going and what will be next, but as a matchup, it's absolutely fascinating. No, it is, because when you look at Cyril Gann, he's kind of the opposite to what Tai Tuivasa is. Of course, the two big, big heavyweights, both with knockout power. Uh, but the difference is, is that Cyril Gann is so, he's like poetry in motion. Mm, yeah. Very, very light on his feet, almost ballet dancer, like a great footwork, in and out movement, a variety of strikes. Well, on the flip side, tied to Avarsa, we all know what he brings to the table. Raw power, excitement, but the man's a slugger. So if he tries to make it a technical kickboxing affair, he's gonna lose that. Yeah. To win this fight, it's gonna have to be exciting. He's gonna have to go down, he's gonna have to take risks, try and back him up against the fence. And as he says, if I dink him, I sink him. And that's my awful Australian accent. It's more French than Australian, if I'm honest. <laughs> no, no, I like it. Listen, they're, they're both two incredibly nice guys. Yeah. Especially for heavyweights, big boys and what have you. But what are you saying about the heavyweights? The heavyweights are nice people. Yeah, I'm just, but they knock people out for fun. Especially that's what for heavyweights. Yeah, you know what I mean? The, that the, was a bit of a backhanded compliment, the, Nick. Oh, right. I've that's got a lot of heavyweight friends. Francis people. and Gary was outside. He wants to win with you afterwards. I like Francis. He's a good boy. Anyway, on this particular fight, do you think there's more pressure on Cyril, being French, being in his hometown, being... He's, he's already been further up the tree than Tai Do You think there's more pressure on him coming into this weekend? Of course, yeah, 100%. He's carrying the show. He's, his name's all over the poster. It's a, it's him that the French media nationwide are going to be demanding what near time with wanting to promote the show. Mm. Tai Tuivasa is sitting downstairs like he hasn't got a kid in the world, you know, and that's a happy fighter is always the most dangerous type of fighter. He's come here basically with nothing to lose. All he's got to do is close that distance and land one shot. And he knows he's got one shot knockout power. Whereas Silgan, he's carrying the whole show himself. And Silgan's style, you would suggest that he wants to take Ty Vassar into deep waters before he sinks him. But to get into deep waters, you've got to avoid those big shots to get there as well. So there's loads of jeopardy here for Silgan. And as you say, He's the guy further up the rankings. Tai Tuivasa's looking up at Siddlegan, so... But, uh, respectfully, there's one point 
that, you know, Cyril Garn is coming off the back of an f- a unsuccessful title shot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if he wins, he's not going to get a shot at the belt. Yeah. Title of Oz is right there. Five wins in a row, five knockouts in a row. If he can go out there and beat the last guy to challenge for the belt, of course, more than likely, you think he's going to be the next guy in line. So yeah. I think that brings a lot of pressure as well. But you're right in what you yeah. say. Cyril Garn is going to be the one with the crazy media schedule. I'm sure his PR schedule this week has been nuts. Listen... Tatu Avast is a fan's favourite, there's no doubt about that. People absolutely love him. Shoey celebrations and what have you. But he's kind of, as well, inspiration for other mixed martial arts because you've rightfully pointed out, he's on a wonderful win streak. Three years ago, he'd lost three on the spin, yep. this fella. Well, he came to the UFC, had three great wins, then he lost three, and it looked like he finally got exposed, so mm-hmm. to speak. He was a slugger, he wasn't good enough. So then, kind of reinvented himself when he started training in Dubai. Of course, the pandemic kind of forced that upon him. And whatever they're doing out there with him, it's working. As yeah. I say, five in a row, five knockouts, all exciting finishes. And not just that, this is what we love about Taito of Vars. It's the will to win. Like, yeah. last time out against Derek Lewis, on the floor, getting pounded. Looked like the end was nigh, and he was just like, no, no, starts hitting him from underneath just says screw this I'm getting back to my feet and then face plants him knocks yeah. him out cold I mean the man's exciting simple as that mm. winning's a habit as well you know once you get into that into your stride and you start putting people away you relax more your shoulders come down a little bit you think you think you know what it's clicking now it's working when you you know when you're struggling and when you've got a couple of defeats you, you can't really see the end you, you you're, you're locked in but as Mike said that restart we went out to Dubai we went to, went to met his team met his coaches out there and they said he's had like a new lease of life. It's like we've taken all the shackles off his shoulders and he's just doing tied to Avassa. And downstairs, mm. he's sitting there, he's got rings on every finger, oh he's holding God. court with <laughs> the everybody. The rings. It's insane. But he's doing tied to Avassa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, for me, that's what makes him so dangerous for this fight. And also the increased maturity or the experience, whichever one you want to call it, because I was talking to him and he said, listen, I'm not going to rush it. He said, I've got 25 minutes yeah. here. If yeah. I do rush it, if I get a little reckless, a guy that's as clinical and technical as Cyril Garn, he's going to catch me. He said, I only need to connect once. I know that. So I've got 25 minutes, so I'm going to take my time, I'm going to be patient, but he's going to be aggressive looking for the opening, but he's not going to rush it. And again, I think that's a sign of his experience and his growth. What type of version of Cyril Garn are you expecting in this contest, given he's coming off the back of that well, title exactly. attempt? The, the, the only loss of his career as well, let's mm. be honest. And anytime you lose, certainly when it's your first one, as you said, winning's a habit. Yeah. Losing can also become a habit. Correct. This is not a habit for him. It's only happened one time. And he wants to reestablish himself as the top dog. He wants to be a champion. He's got the whole nation of France behind him. This this country, sorry, this event has sold out to the max, as I said, way oversold. And he has, he's on the cusp of becoming an, I mean, he's already a big star, let's be honest, but becoming a superstar in France. Yeah. So if he can come into this one and get a win over title, of Arsa, which I'm sure is favoured to do. Mm. I mean, the world's his oyster. Mm. Winner of this, Curtis Blades. I think that's the obvious next yeah, step, isn't it? We talked about it in July, didn't we, in London, that there was basically two semi finals going on at the moment. And of course, there's the spectre of John Jones that's been yeah. hanging over the heavyweight yeah. division for about yeah. four years. But listen, until that man walks to the octagon, I don't believe he's coming back. You know, I'm sick of writing stories about John Jones is coming back, John Jones is coming back. Until he makes the walk, forget about John Jones. So you've got to look at. Curtis Blades is waiting for the winner this weekend. They will have a final, hopefully before the end of the year. And come 2023, Francis Ngannou's got a number one contender. Yeah, listen, as the locals say, everybody's excited around here. Bonnet de douche. Can't wait to get stuck into that main event. Core main event, the Australasian theme. Don't shake your head. The Australasian theme does continue because we've got... It's an interesting one, this in the middleweight division, because we've got Robert Whittaker taking on Marvin Vittori. Both guys have had a go at the champion. What does this mean for them? Well, first of all, I want to say with this fight card, you are really spoiling us, Monsieur. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, no, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, both of these guys, I mean, outside of Israel Adesanya, they're the best guys in the division right now. Yeah. It's a really risky fight for both men. It's a tough fight for both men, and I really respect them for taking it because if this was boxing, I don't think this fight would be getting made. It's yeah, simple right. as that. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. both of them, they're right there, but they're not going to get a title fight. You know, Rob just lost to Izzy. Simple as that. He's not going to get another one just yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vittoria, who's only two fights ago, and he's lost to him twice as well. Yeah. Basically, what this is, is two guys trying to prove who the top dog is other than the champion. Mm-hmm. And of course, they keep the momentum rolling. They get a win. You know, they improve. They make some money. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. That's a big one as well. But... Uh, a very, very tough competitive fight. Mm. It's a fantastic matchup, and I suppose going off what Mike's just said there, both of them will be looking at that upcoming fight between Izzy and Pereira, thinking, 
I hope the other guy wins because if yeah, the other 100%. guy wins, then oh, you're next the Well, exactly. If Pereira wins, then one of those guys is in pole. Whoever wins this weekend is in pole position to fight for the title. And I think that's got to be the motivation because this is MMA. Anything can happen. But also, even if Izzy wins, Izzy wins. He's already running through the division twice. Now they're getting guys like Bahia fast tracking them through division just so he's got fresh meat to tackle. Mm. I think Izzy might just go, you know what? I'm going to kick back for a little bit. Maybe have a look at moving up a weight division. Kamaru's just lost his belt. Kamaru's already talk, talking previously about wanting to move through divisions as well. They could do a little deal there. So I think there's a lot on this fight this weekend, not just one and two in a division, but also the winner. Okay, it might seem a little bit cloudy at the moment, but come the end of the year, the smoke might clear and the winner's in pole position to fight for the title again. Mm. Stylistically, how do, how do you think this one goes down? Uh, well, if you look at Marvin Vittoria, I mean, the man's a brawler. He loves those wars, but he's also very technical with it. Yeah. You know, tied to a bar, so he's technical as well, but Vittoria's a very, very good fighter. But just look at that fight with Paolo Costa. I mean, that was an absolute barn burner. He ate so many shots, heavy shots, didn't blink, didn't take a backward step. And of course, rightly won a decision, you know? So I just love everything about him. I love his attitude. He's always getting better. You know, yeah. he's, he's learning how to wrestle. He can defend the takedowns well. And I think that's gonna be a key for Robert in this one. You know, Robert always sprinkles in a few takedowns here and there. Against yeah. Adesanya, it wasn't enough, but generally we see him Till. taking people down. That like like Till. Darren Till, like against Jared Cannonier. The ability yeah. to mix things up and take mm. them down. So I think Vittori's going to have to be careful of that. Vittori's going to want to go forward, swing head, heavy leather, throw hard kicks, you know. It's a Marvin Vittori fight. And he's got over a thousand people, personal friends from Italy, yeah. all making the journey here. And then there's obviously going to be a bunch of Italians that he doesn't know either, mm. you know. So over a thousand tickets he has facilitated through the UFC to Italians. Incredible. I mean, talk about support, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, we just walked through the lobby then, literally. 10 minutes ago, and he's downstairs holding court. He's got Playing the, ping pong. the table, <laughs> his table to themselves. There's yeah. Italians everywhere around the table, tennis table. He's probably gonna be there for the next couple of days. But you're right to him, this will feel like, I know we're not in Italy, but in France, but it'll feel like a home fight. He's got this huge support coming over. He's not used to that. He's used to being in America yeah. on his own, training on his own in California. Fighting at the traveling, apex. Exactly, traveling around. Like, Counts on probably one hand the number of times he's been able to have friends and family in the audience. Not only friends and family, half his hometown are going to be here on Saturday night. And that's going to drive him on to the next level, definitely. Mm. Uh, you're obviously calling through these fights yes. in the weekend, so I'm not going to put you on the spot. Time for a bit of Nick's picks, the double bubble. What do you reckon, men, co-men? How do you think they're going? Um, I, th I think the co-main event, you know, I'm a massive fan of Bobby Knuckles. I think Robert Whittaker's the complete package. And I think if it wasn't for the fact that we've got this superstar, could Israel ever send you in the division, I think he'd probably still be the middleweight champion. But I do like Vittori here in France for everything we've just said. I think Vittori's going to cause a little bit of an Ooh. upset. Yeah, maybe. Main event. Very close. Um... Mate, I just want to do a shoey. <laughs> I just want to do a shoey. Sorry, France. And I love Cyril Gann. No, no. I love Cyril Gann. But you know what? Come on, man. We haven't come all this, this way is, not to do a shoey. This is what I said we? as come well. On. It's not like I'm leaning one way or the other, but I just want to see the look, like the situation, the hypothetical situation potentially. Well, tied to a vase, jumping on top of the ox, going and doing a shoey. Yeah. And all the French just... Looking at exactly, discussion. Yeah. What is this? Is this is <laughs> this just, just one of those dodgy weak beers pouring yeah, as well. Yeah. Just to rub salt into the wound. Pouring champagne into a shoe, you know. A little bit of red wine. A classy shoe. A classy shoe. Uh, uh, prelims get going from 6 uh, p.m. Uh, on BT Sport 3 this weekend with the main card getting underwear from 8. Um, I'm not going to go into the prelims. I'm going to leave this open for the rest of the card, gents, for you to pick your fight for everybody else to keep an eye on after the main and come in. Nick, I'll, go, I'll let Nick go first. Oh, is that right? It's quiet. Salt. This is okay. It's a Salt Lake thing. They've, they've yeah, asked. No, yeah, no, I know. Exactly. Salt Lake so right, right. first, okay, as then. always. So what's the fight that you're looking out for? No surprise here. Nathaniel Wood, absolutely outstanding in July. He missed out on UFC London in, in March. Yeah. He's begged the UFC. Listen, I've just put in a, a fantastic performance. Probably should have got a bonus in July. Please turn me around again quick. Please get me out in Paris. They've replied and gone, no problem at all. You've made a good impact at Featherweight. Tried this for size and then threw Charles Jordan mm. at him. The guy is legit. Yeah, man. Absolutely legit. That sensational submission of Venata from last year. I know he's coming off a loss to Bear Joss, but no shame no, in that come whatsoever. On, what a fight that was. What a fight that was. You know, I, I thought in July, 
Nathaniel was just too quick, too elusive on his feet, and was able to pick himself to victory. He won't get that against no. Jordan, who will be right in his face, wanting a war. I think it could be fight that nice. Yeah, no, that's going to be a sensational fight. And as you said, last time out, Nathaniel would. I thought he was sensational. Brilliant. The only thing that I didn't like was that I thought in the third round, he could have gone for the finish a okay. little bit more. And I said that to him earlier. I said, I hope you didn't take offense. He's like, no, mate, I totally get what you were saying. So thank you, Nathaniel, for being so understanding. And as you say, Charles Jordan, unreal. Uh, my pick, I'll yep. save you team me up. Obviously on the prelims, we've got Joaquin Buckley. You know, we all know him from that. Yep. Stunning knockout that he had on Fight Island where he jumped up in the air and did the spinning back kick. Uh, unreal. I mean, he's coming into this one. Loads of confidence. I was talking to him earlier and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's confident. Let's just put it like that. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a little bit full of himself, you know, but you're supposed to be as a exactly. fighter and he's taking on... Uh, Imavov. I mean, again, last time out we saw him against uh, Edmund Shabazz. You've got a beautiful stop in round two. Mm. He's had some good wins, so it's going to be a banger. A Dagestani beast out of France as well from Sir. Yeah. From Silgan's team, so you know it'll feel like a home fight for him as well. So uh, yeah, let's be, let's be unreal. I'm looking forward to the atmosphere. First yeah, time we've too. been here, it's going to be absolutely pumping. It's going to be electric yeah. on Saturday night. I think five French fighters on the card as well. Yeah, and there's some other ones, as you said, that are kind of based here. Exactly. Bit of David Guetta on the speakers. Let's oh. go. <laughs> let's go. I'm going for a bit of Jean Michel Jarre. That's what I'm going for. I said, you know what I mean? Get it all pumping. No, who's, who's that? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching our little preview of UFC Paris. Uh, you can catch all these fights live on BT Sport 3. Prelims from 6 with the main card getting going at 8. Petit pois. <laughs>